You are welcome to the Nigeria Filmmaker, a podcast about Nigerian filmmakers, their films, and how we can build a diverse and functional industry. I'm your host, Selegot. On this episode, my guest is Chidimai Bokweuchi. She's a writer, director, and producer. She's also the founder of Nolly Data, Nollywood's first database website. She has written and directed two shorts, Machi and Fate. We talk about her origin story as a writer, the Accelerate Filmmaker Project, and running Nolly Data. If you're a new listener, you're welcome and I hope you enjoy. Hi, Chidima, you're welcome to the Niger Filmmaker. Thank you for having me. Okay, so can you introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Chidimai Bukwe Uche. I'm a filmmaker, a writer, director, producer, sometimes, and the founder of um, Nolly Data. Okay, so um, can you tell us like how your filmmaking journey started? Um, okay, so basically, um, to not make the story very long, because as a kid, I've always like, loved reading and writing, but I didn't know I was going to be a filmmaker. I thought I was going to be a lawyer, but uh, basically I started out writing with some bloggers and then I got a job with Linda KG Media and yeah. I started out as a writer on her website. And uh, that was at the period where she was starting out her TV thing, where she was still opening up her TV um, side mm. of things. And she had hired like a bunch of young filmmakers, a bunch of young uh, presenters, um, editors, cameramen, and all of those things. And they were testing out content, creating content, producing, like editing and all of those things. And so I was very curious as to what they were doing. So most of the time when I wasn't writing on the blog, I was always on at the TV side of things. And as time went by, I started like getting involved in the things they were doing. I started giving opinions on what I thought they could do or a content I thought that they could make or how they could go about the content that they were trying to make. At some point, one of the presenters, Hiro Daniels, reached out to me to write his show, which was Report Card. It was basically a Nigerian version of The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Mm. And uh, I'm someone that loves like, writing comedy or sarcastic like that of stuff. So I tried it out. I wrote the first episode. And apparently it was really good. They recorded. I was in the studio when it was recorded. I helped out. I gave ideas and all of those things. And before you know it, I was not writing for, for the show. And I, I wrote like the entire season one. And then also started like co-producing some of the other shows that were being made in the company. And with that, my interest like in the making visual content also like started to grow. So basically, I started out doing more lifestyle content before I now started doing like films and film related stuff. And that opportunity came like when I saw, when I registered for the Accelerate Filmmaker Project, and then I got picked as one of the students. We did the training, we pitched, and luckily I was among the top six that were selected to make a short film. So mm. that short film with Matthew was like how I fully ventured into filmmaking. So I wrote, directed, and co-produced um, the short film Machi. And that was like my, basically my real first foray into um, filmmaking proper, proper. And after making the pro- after making the film, I ended up working with the company Accelerate. And from there, I became a producer and I was producing a lot of their in-house lifestyle content and also became a producer for the next set that made their own short films. I became an associate producer, basically like a supervising producer. And then also, so that's basically how the journey started. And then every other thing I followed um, after that. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about, um, you know, the Accelerate um, Filmmaker Project. So you applied for it and you were one of the six selected. So how was that whole process for you, you know? Um, like at that point, how much did you know about filmmaking and how did this process kind of help you in growing? So um, before I was selected to be a participant in the filmmaking project, I had missed the last days on by like two days. So I had been following, like obviously I'd been checking out some young filmmakers on social media and then started 
um, following them after I realized that, yeah, I do like writing, but I also really wanted to make visual content. Then I used to think like, oh, one day I'm going to write a novel. But then I realized that instead of doing a novel, I actually wanted people to see and watch the things that I had written and mm-hmm. also like also direct stuff. So I had started following some filmmakers like Amasami's, Adenike Adebayo. And I think it was on Adenike's page that I stumbled on, or Amasami's page, one of them, their entry for the Accelerate Filmmaker Project of 2017. So that was, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Because I've always been thinking, like, how do I break into this industry? What do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? And that was proving difficult. There's something I had applied for, but I wasn't selected. And then I saw the filmmaker project where they were basically going to train you for free and give you opportunity to make short film and all of this. I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. And then I saw that I had missed the deadline by like two days. So that was like devastating for me. But what I did was that I followed up. I started following like the company, more people that I had submitted there. Because like, if you look at the hashtag, you could see all the entries. And then I was like, okay, next year I was going to apply. So I was like, as at that time, I was now consistently looking forward to when next they were going to um, select people. So I followed the journey of those that were selected for that year. I saw when they put out the list of people that were selected for the training. I saw when they put out the list of people that passed and became the top five. When they made their short films, I watched it. Like I just followed their journey. I was like, this is exactly like the this is what I needed in order to break into this industry since I didn't have like a lot of connection and the other things I was trying to do wasn't working out. So by the time they, they did a call for, um, call for entries the next day, I knew and I was ready. So um, thankfully I was working at Linda KG where they had cameras. I had like filmmakers around me. So when I saw the call for entries and this team, I wrote some Something called my colleagues. They helped. Speak, they helped me to shoot, edited, and then we put it out. And funny enough, when the first list came out, when they put out like the twenty, was it twenty people that were mm. selected to be in the program? My name was not there. Mm. So that was like really devastating. And I was like, it makes no sense. My video was very good. I didn't shoot with phone. Yeah. I shot with camera. I had professional editors. Like I like that. I did a good job. That's what I thought. So as somebody like me that is very stubborn, I was like, okay, maybe all these things that I'm thinking in my head that I was good enough, I wasn't good, but let me know what was wrong and yeah. let me not make the same mistake again the next year. So I, ha- I now reached out to the supervising producer, which, um, Lala Kindoji. Lala mm-hmm. was like the face of the, um, of the project. So I'm not like, hi, this is me. This is the video that I submitted. I wasn't selected, it's sad, but I really would want to know why this video was rejected. Like, what was the criteria for selection? And she was surprised. I was not like, no, that this is one of the videos that she liked, that, mm. that maybe there was an error, that something happened. Like, she can't believe, like, I wasn't selected. Mm. So I was not like, oh, thank you so much for letting me know, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing, one of the in-house um, supervising process for the project called me the next day and spoke to me and apologized. I said, oh, like there was an omission and I was supposed to be selected, that I should not worry that I've been selected. But I, because there are two stages, so you, they'll select you and then you now send in a treatment and then you cannot make it to the top 20. Okay, the first one was top 50 and okay. then top 20. So was that like just go ahead and submit a treatment for the next stage? Then if you not make the next stage, your name would be in the would be on the list. And then I sent a treatment, and then I made it into the program, which was so which something I would have lost if I didn't like take um, the extra step of asking, hey, what was wrong with what I did? Because I was genuinely asking so that next day if I am applying again, I'm not going to make. Um, the same mistake, okay. that kind of thing, but it now worked out that it was an omission. And then I made it to the program. And the training was, I think, one of the best things that happened for my filmmaking career. I think that it was a space I was supposed to be at at that moment. Because yeah. almost everybody that I work with now, the projects that I've done, things that I've done, and the community that I've built from that um, program, most of the people that I did the program with, we still speak. 
a lot of them I still work with or we help each other out. So more than the training that we got from the um, top people in the industry, it was also a, a way for us to build a community of young filmmakers that we could collaborate with, try out things with, those kind of things. Yeah. So the program was like really, really important and was like a way for me to meet a lot of people that are like a huge part of my story now. Yeah. Um, during the program, um, Mr. Victor Sanchez, who is like one of Nigeria's best writers, in my opinion, was assigned as my mentor when I made it to the top six. And that was like one of the best things that happened to me because he really, really mentored me. Like he put me through the ropes. At the point, I was even, I was like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I'm tired. Like I would write something to be like, oh, you've tried, but you still need to do this, blah, blah, blah. But all of those things that he said to me, taught me, and like all of those things, like really, really, I can see the influence and I can see how he's influencing the decisions and the things that I'm making after the program ended. Yeah. Okay, so I guess, um, you know, before you were assigned a mentor, you must have, like, chosen what you wanted to focus on. Like, why did you choose writing? I've always been a writer. I think mm-hmm. that's the one that I've always been. When I was really small, uh, my parents used to buy, like, every Saturday when they go for, like, normal grocery shopping. Yeah. Novel for cinema is part of this, consistently. So sometimes when I go to the market with them, they'll stop at a bookshop and buy books for me. So one of the, one time we went to a bookstore that we usually buy books from, and then all the age um, appropriate books there, I had read it. Like all the age appropriate novels for me there, I had read it. And the bookstore, and I cannot forget, was fascinating. And I was like, if you have read everything in my store, then you should write your own. Mm. So um, that was, I think I was in primary five. So I started writing. I started writing. I was like, oh, it's even to let me write something. So I got like an exercise book. I started writing. Yeah. And then consistently, I've already written. I used to have a blog where I used to put out stories, um, serious stories, like every week I put out an episode. And I had a following then, actually. Like I had people that really used to look forward to the stories I was writing then. Yeah. So I've always written. I think that's the one that I knew uh, from beginning of time that I was always going to write. But I used to think like, oh, I'll write a novel form. But when I got introduced to screenwriting, a friend of mine who is one of the people that pushed me, like she bought me a screenwriting book. And when I read it, I was like, okay, like I really like this. This sounds interesting. And then during the program, when Victor Sanchez taught, because he taught screenwriting, I think that was one of the most exciting classes for me. I think that was also what made me know that I should further pursue screenwriting and then the directing classes too, because I also realized that whenever I'm writing, I'm visualizing how I think the actors should show the expression, what I want them to do, and all of those. So I started researching on that. But the, for the screenwriting part, it was just something that at the back of my mind that I always knew that, yeah, this was like something I should try out. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, you were you were selected into the top. Um, five or six projects and you know you guys you wrote and directed a project what was your story about oh my story Machi, is about a girl a lady on the, on the big side and has no self-esteem and then um, she was on this um, online relationship with somebody who lived outside the country and on social media she had like a persona that was fake so on social media she was clean because she used to edit her pictures and then um, use filters and all of those things. So the story was following her, you know, all of those things until the guy now tells her that he was going to pay her a surprise visit like the next two days and come back to Nigeria. Yeah. So we now see this character trying to do everything possible to look like the images that she was putting up on social media, which clearly is not possible. She was trying to like lose massive weight within two days. She was, she was trying out the most ridiculous things, looking for weight loss pills, Mm. And then trying to drink with lust, with things that were not healthy, trying to over exercise, force herself until she now had to get to a place where she had to um, make a decision, accept who she was when the guy came, be honest, and say, Hey, this is who I am, this is what I've done, and then um, you can take me the way I am, or it's okay if you don't want to, because clearly I have life. So, just following this person's journey to self acceptance and then um, body positivity. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm guessing that this was like 
your first time on a proper set. How was that experience, you know, making and directing Machi? Yeah, it was, yes, it was actually my first time on the proper set, I think, even though I've been like on a lot of, yeah, it was actually the same because other times we were in the studio. It was an interesting experience. I think I was lucky. I had a lot of help. I had a lot of people that were, that made this easy for me. But let me be honest with you, I cried on sets. Like, there's no point in hiding this. I entered the bathroom and cried a couple yeah. of times because I was frustrated. Um, but I had a lot of you. help. <laughs> Well, a lot of situations and names that I cannot mention, but I was in a situation where somebody had said something that was very disrespectful mm. and made me feel small. And I was, at that time, I didn't know how to handle emotions and all of those things. And I was like, I mean, I'm a newbie and the person really made me feel small. So that really made me cry. So I entered the bathroom, cried, and then called my mom again and cried some more. Yeah. And then still like did the job. But okay. apart from that experience, apart from that, I had like a lot of people help me. And because of the story I was telling, we needed a lot of junior. So I had reached out to somebody that I knew when I was working at Linda. That's Lata Shangube. I was like, oh, I'm writing this story about body positivity. And because she's big on that, she's big on like body positivity and then um, the message of that. And she was like, oh, this sounds interesting. I want to be a part of it. So I'm like, okay, you can come on board as my associate producer. So she helped me a lot yeah. to get location get a brand to like give us their fitness whereas which is not something that is very common for like a first time um filmmaker like i shot in a very cute space yeah. i shot with like really good like um gym wears and um that kind of thing and the the staff that i worked with so like the cinematographers and all the other people yeah. that we worked with like really made the experience not to be that not to be terrible Okay. Apart from like the one person that made me feel um, small, but yeah. it was like a big learning curve for me that after that whole experience and how I reacted to it, like I later took the time out and after I spoke to a couple of older filmmakers about the situation, like it helped me know how to re react or behave on set or what to expect or what to look out for when I'm casting or hiring and all of those so that I am not in that kind of situation again even though that every film is a new experience yeah. but like there are things that you can preempt before it happens those kind of situations so it wasn't the worst experience because i've heard people's like terrible stories or said so mm. mine wasn't the worst yeah okay i mean you know like filmmaking or making a film whether it's a short film or a feature you know it's a essentially a moving train and you know there are a lot of moving parts and you can get overwhelmed yeah um you know yes. this happened for your first experience but i guess you learned certain things so how do you say you kind of developed a thick skin for certain things that happen and you know kind of trying to keep your your focus on your goal you know finishing like this film like making the making of it mm -hmm. Like, how have you kind of developed your thick skin? Man, I don't know that I have a thick skin one, but I mean, there are things that I can see now that, oh, this person is this type of person. So I'm not able to, like, stop, put a stop to it before it becomes a problem. Yeah. Do you understand? Because um, I, I'm not even going to lie. After that film... I've made another short film, but that one was during COVID. Like, so I wasn't really on set. Like, it was an experimental film that I did. Mm. But then I've done a bigger project that really frustrated me. And then, um, so I'm not going to say that I have a thin skin, but I've also learned how to manage different people. Okay. Uh, but again, one of the things that I seriously believe in and I preach about is like, I'm not going to act like everything is okay if, if everything is not okay with me. Yeah. If I'm overwhelmed, I'm going to allow myself feel and mm. I'm going to process why I'm overwhelmed and I'm going to see how I'm contributing to it and what I need to do better. And But the thing, I'm, the thing I've learned to do is to process that very fast and not let it get to where it now becomes a bigger problem than what it needs to be. Because yeah. that's one of the things that I've learned is where you are like swallowing and swallowing and swallowing and we're like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. 
when you now have an ag boss, it now becomes bigger than what it should be if you had taken care of things like earlier. Mm. So I think that's one of the things that I've learned. So I've had projects overwhelm me. I've had projects frustrate me. I've had projects that I've had a lot and a lot of fun doing. So like you said, every set is a different set. But one of the things that I've also learned is when how to behave on a set, on a set that I have full control over. Yeah. What I would take, how I want people that I'm on set to behave, how I want to behave, how I want to act around people. So when I'm on a different set that I don't have full control over, I tend to see the things that I don't like. Oh, like, you know, when it's not your set, there's only so much you can say, except yeah. you now want to become a problem. So mm-hmm. but you, what you now do is that you learn, oh, if I said, this is not how I want to behave, or this is not how I want people to behave, or this is not how I'm going to react to this certain type of situation. Yeah. Those kind of things are things that I've now learned. Like from making that short film, one of the biggest things which might be sad to say is that I am very particular about casting. I'm mm. very particular about the, the, the crew that I hire. I'm very particular because energy transfers of set. Yeah. Set is very tiring. People put in ridiculous hours of work on set. Like we, we work with inhuman hours, do you understand? Mm-hmm. And the only thing that keeps people going is the energy. Is the like, oh, we are here for a goal. We know that the film is more important than any of our egos and all of those things. And energy transfers. So when you have one person that has a bad vibe and bad energy on set, it starts to transfer. People mm-hmm. that do not misbehave will start misbehaving because, oh, this person is doing it and getting away with it. Why should I be? Why should I not? Do you understand? So that's one of the things I learned from my short film, to be very particular about how I cast, to listen to my instinct. When mm. my instinct says, when I have a conversation with somebody pre-production and it's not looking like we are going to jail, we don't have the same values, the goal is the, we don't have the same set of goals, I, will, I would ask myself whether is it absolutely important that I work with this person, either as a crew or as a cast member, yeah. as a cast member. And then I will make a decision. I know what is more important, working with this person or having a very peaceful set. So that's one of the things that I've learned. And that's how that's one of the things that I've realized that makes my experience on set even a lot better. Because I recently did a series. I created and um, directed, like I created, wrote and directed a series, it's still in post-production. And everybody that had worked on that set keeps saying, like, this is one of the most this is one of the best things they, they have been on. They can't believe that we are this few. We are small yeah. and we are working really hard. But from the beginning of time, we made sure that we didn't work with people that we are going to be stressful. My producer, we were, we really worked well together because your film at the end of the day, if you don't have a producer that you are in terms with, it can be a problem. And sometimes when I was like, hey, I've spoken with this person. I don't like this person's energy. This person doesn't look like somebody that sees this project as something important. I don't think we should work with that person. Yeah. And she's always like, oh, okay, let me speak to the person and also make my own assertion. And sometimes she'll be like, maybe the person was having a bad day. This person is not like that. Maybe she's like, okay, it's true. Let's get somebody else. And we ended up, again, there was luck. But we ended up working with really good people. We ended up working with people that had the same goal. People that were like, yeah, we are here to make a really good project. We want this yeah. thing to work, and that is the goal here. So that really worked out uh, well for us. And because we really did a good job, if I do say so myself, of casting both the crew and also hiring, casting the uh, casting, and then also hiring the crew um, members that we worked with. So again, I don't know what the next project is going to look like for me, but I've mm. also come to a space where like I'm going to always put my foot down when something is not being done right, or I'm going to be very selective of projects that I, I work on. If this doesn't feel like it's going to be good virus and good energy, in spite of the hard work, yeah. then maybe I should take a step back. I said, well, well, if the money is big, let me not lie. Mm-hmm. If the money is worth it, you can swallow it. <laughs> yeah, there's always the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you, you know, with the Accelerate film, Filmmaker Project, you know, it's kind of, the films that get made from that project automatically get shown at um, AFRIF. Um, I'm guessing yes. your film got shown at AFRIF. Yes. Okay, how was that experience? You know, it's one thing to think of a film, it's one thing to make it, then it's one thing to, you know, 
show it to the audience, you know, for this film to be scrutinized and all that. How was that experience for you? I mean, I was mostly scared during the process, but I was like, who am I to make a film that is going to be shown on the big screen and for people to watch? I mean, for me, when I finished making it, I was like, oh, this is a short film. Like, I don't even think it's that important. I don't even think that it makes that sense. But I was like, oh, okay, I'm also proud of the one that I had done. Yeah. And obviously, there were mistakes that were made that I've learned to. But it was an interesting experience. It was fun. And thankfully, most of the people that were there were friends and well wishers. Like, there wasn't really critics. So we didn't, mm. didn't really have that. We had more of people that were cheering us on. And we we're like, it's enough that you guys have done it. Yeah. It's something to be proud of. So it was an exciting experience because I had my fellow filmmakers. I had, like, people, the mentors that trained us, the teachers that trained us, people in the industry that were just, like, excited to see younger people trying out and doing something. So it was just a fun experience. It yeah. was hard to come in front of people and speak, though, when my film had finished training. So I was just blabbing and just say thank you, and then I left. I forgot mm -hmm. to thank I was supposed to thank. Yeah. But... <laughs> But it was a good, it was, it was, it was a good experience to see what it feels like for, for you to sit in a room and over like 200 people are watching your film at the same time and you're getting a uh, real life reaction. Okay. Like you might yeah. have done something like, oh yeah, people are supposed to laugh. And then that place plays and nobody's laughing. And you're like, oh, damn it. So people didn't, um, take on this the way you thought they would. So what did you do wrong? This kind of thing. But generally, it was a very, very pleasant experience. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, I'll ask, um, can you mention three random facts about you? Random facts about me? Yeah. Hmm. Number one, I'm obsessed with BTS, the boy band. Okay. Like I'm a terrible obsession. Yeah. <laughs> and how, um, how are you taking their um, break? They're not on the break, actually. I think now that they are, what they are doing is that they're taking on solo projects alongside group projects. So we are even getting more contests than we used to get when they were just doing group group. One of my bias is J-Hope is releasing an album next month. So we are looking forward to that. Don't mm. get me wrong. Even before this call, I was playing one of their the games that came out yesterday okay. and I was having fun but like I'm fully a big huge fan of them yeah. and yeah the day they said they were taking a break I was among those that cried be not because of the break but because of the dinner video they put out that was emotional secondly I'm learning Korean language okay. um not influenced by BTS but also not 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 influenced by them. I'm leaving the beginning. I'm entering intermediate at the moment. Yeah. But um, what's another fact about me that does not relate to Korea? Because I'm just about to say that I, I'm obsessed with Korean dramas, but enough of Korea. So I'm looking for something else yeah. that is not that. Um, I'm trying to think of something that might seem remotely interesting. Yeah. Oh, I don't want kids. Yeah, I don't want okay. kids. I think right. that's something. Yeah, apart from also loving Asian content and Korean dramas and Thai dramas and Japanese dramas. Like I watch a lot of Asian cinema and dramas and content. Yes. Okay. All right. So um. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Nolly Data. Tell us. A you know brief summary about you know what Nolly Data is. Mm, Nolly Data is like a one-stop shop for a lot of things Nollywood. So it's basically a space where, like the name says, is data. Um, where a space where you can go to and find um talent, people that work in the industry, both crew, cast, and then also a space where you can find information about movies that have been made. And all of so it's a combination of like if people like people fondly say a combination of IMDb and LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn in this in the sense that you can get hired, like somebody a casting director can go through the 
through our data and people that have signed up and see if somebody there fits what they're looking for. And we also make the search even easier by having filters that allows you to like browse through exactly what you're looking for. So if you're looking for somebody that can play the ages of um, 20 to 25, you can filter for that and only the faces and pictures you'll be seeing will be those that I can play that in. So you can make your selection. You can click and see their monologues, their headshots, their freelance pictures, where they are based, works that they have done. So basically it allows creatives to like have like a CV on the go that they can just send the link to somebody. Oh, let me see what you have done. You send the link to the person and the person is able to see everything that you have done at advance with your mm. pictures. Like all of those things that are supposed to be sending one by one, one by one. Oh, this is my headshot. Oh, this is one of my monologue. This is the second monologue. Oh, these are projects that I've done. Those kind of things where I'm based. Like you just like send the link and the person like at advance sees everything that they need to see. That's yeah. one of the things that does on one side. On the other side, it allows the audience to see what movies that are being made in Hollywood, what movies that are out there, where they can watch it, information about them, when it was released, cast and crew that made the movies, and those informations that naturally you don't find. Yeah. So that's what Lonely Data is. In, yes, just briefly, amongst other things, but these are like the major things that Lonely Data offer. Okay. So you... um co-founded the company with Ibrahim Suleiman. Yes. So what, what clicked for both of you that you decided to, you know, um, create this, um, you know, product for the Nigerian film industry? Well, not only this, I started out as my idea. It was an idea that I had when I was making my first short film, this uh, matter that we had just finished talking about. Um, yeah. Like I told you initially earlier, it's a story about somebody that was on the big side and then, um, so I needed to cast somebody that was on the big side. And it seemed at that time, like Nollywood didn't have somebody on the big side because I had searched and searched and searched and searched all nooks and crannies of Instagram and I didn't find somebody. And there was no space. I was like, ah, this is hard. Like, I wish there could be a space where you go to know that where you are here is only, it's only actors that you are seeing. Yeah. So you can now just start searching and start looking with somebody. But on Instagram, you are just calling and hoping that you find something or you go to like maybe studio um, houses, their Instagram pages, and see, oh, former projects that I've done, and see people that acted on it. So that was really, 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 really frustrating for me. Then I now found somebody, I was watching a film, and then found somebody, I was like, oh, this person looks like who I'm looking for. This person looks like somebody that can play the character that I wanted. Then I saw the yeah. name of the film, but I couldn't find the name of this person. I think, no, it was a picture. It wasn't a film. I just saw the, somebody's picture online. The, her name wasn't tagged, just the name of the film. So mm -hmm. there was the comment session. Nobody was calling her name. So I was like, who is this person? How do I find this person? Which I went on Google and typed in the name of the film, hoping that I would see, like, you know how you normally see in Hollywood, where that's the name of the film. You can see all the information about the mm -hmm. film online. And um, yeah, no luck. I didn't see that. And I had to start sending her pictures to different WhatsApp groups and asking, do you know this person? Who is she? I'm looking for her. Like, but before I now finally found who she was, and that was a, a frustrating experience. And I thought to myself, there should be an easier way of doing this. There should just be a database that you can go to, search a few names, look for the cast or look for the crew, and look for and find what you're looking for. If you are watching a film, you're like, oh, the cinematography of this film is nice. I wonder who did this. You don't have to wait till you are finished watching it before you can see the end credit, before you can see who did it. Like you can sit watching and just search on Google and just be like, oh, okay, this person that made the film, or oh, hey, this person that did the makeup. And those were the things that were so difficult to find when it comes to Nollywood. And that was when I was like, oh, this is nice if we had this. Then, but then in my head, I was like, somebody would do it. Like, it can't be me. I'm young. I'm just making my first short film. Yeah. Who do I think that I am? And that was in 2018. So I moved on with life. I had written it down, actually, funny enough. I had taken a book. I was drawing what I thought the homepage would look like, the features it was going to have, all of those things. Mm -hmm. But then I moved on again. And then sometime in 2019, I thought about it again, spoke to a friend about it. The person I said, oh, that's nice. That was when the name only data came to me. And then the person thankfully advised me to like, oh, just buy the domain name. Like the way that you're thinking about it now, it can be the universe. You don't know what will happen. So I bought yeah. the domain name then. And then also ignore it. I was like, hmm, if I don't use it for that, I can use it for something else. But then in 2021, um, I had left Accelerate. And then I was thinking of, oh, what next should I do? Like, should I go get another nine to five? 
or that wants to now concentrate and be um, a freelance um, filmmaker that will give me space to do other things, do other projects. Like a nine to five again is going to like keep me in like one spot and only doing the same type of thing. Mm. And then my I couldn't stop thinking about the idea of running this. And I Googled and saw that, oh, nobody else has even still done this since that time. When I was like, since then, are we not all struggling? Mm. And then in 2020, when I did a series with Accelerate, I struggled with casting because we had unique characters that we needed to cast. And I was like, again, if we had something like Donny Data, we wouldn't be having these issues. So I started doing research and started working on needs. And because the series that we did, we had casted Ibrahim Suleiman, we have known each other before we did the series, but during the series, like we became like closer friends, we used to just blah blah blah. So when I last say I last let me stand on the I found a tech person who spoke. I was still trying to say, hmm, am I okay to do this thing? How can I just leave my job? Or how can I just get fired and then I'm going to go and take on a big project? Yeah. So I tweeted about her, like this thing that I'm doing is, is very, very difficult. I don't even know who sends me. And then he now asked me what's up, what's going on, like what I did, because he was concerned. He thought like um, something had gone around, like, oh, I'm trying to start up a company. This is what it's about. Yeah. I was wondering, like, this makes a lot of sense. I want in, I want to be a part of this. How do I be a part of this? And it was supposed to be like maybe help. And then we now ended up like he now ended up being a co-founder. And mm-hmm. then we it made sense because like he had the popularity. He had the credibility. He also knew from an actor's perspective what was important to them, what would make life easier for them. And then me from a crew perspective knew as a crew member what we struggle with, like what would make it easier as a casting director if I'm trying to cast, as a producer if I'm looking for talent, all of those. So we combine like the struggles that we are having from the different um, sides of Hollywood and then now started working on the... Um, technology for non-data. Okay. That's basically how it started. Yeah. All right. So um, you know, like, you know, IMDb exists, and you know, it's a database of films around the world. Like, um, for you, why did you feel like we needed this Nigerian version? What wasn't IMDb doing for you? Well, Nigerians were not using IMDb. That's just a simple truth that like one percent of nigerian filmmakers using imdb and the nigerian producers and casting directors are not going to imdb to go and look for anything the nigerian audience are not going to imdb to look for Hollywood movies that's just the truth we did the research we saw it do you understand so yeah. at the end of the day imdb was very much international and what only data is only data is very local if you notice on only data we are not putting out films from other countries and all of this we are like very much Nollywood. Nollywood mm. is big enough to have our own IMDb. Yeah. That's, that's our thinking. We are big enough. We are like the third biggest um, film industry in the entire world. So why are we relying on something else that has been built to cater to this other industry to come and also cater and solve our own problems? So basically, that's why we did Nollywood um, data. A lot of Nollywood filmmakers are not going to IMDb to create an account thinking that, oh, it's going to do something for them or they're creating it yes because like internationally if you want to like go internationally it's good to have an imdb like on your account but soon it's going to be good and important for you to have a non data account that is what we're building it to be that is what we are trying to make sure that non data becomes a household name in the industry where if you're looking for information about it oh go to non data or if you yeah. see the information in non data then it's true if you go to knowledge data, you find what you're looking for. That is what we are building it to be. We are basically like how much good. We were launched in February. This is um, June or going to July most. Um, so we are not that old. Do you understand? But we've yeah. seen a lot of sign up. We have seen a lot of um, interest. We have seen a lot of people be like, oh, we have needed this. A lot of filmmakers when we launched, like, we have needed this for the longest time. We've needed this. We need something like this. It's important that we have this. So that shows you that IMDb has not solved this problem that we clearly have. Yeah. Okay. Can you um, kind of list out some of the things that you can have on your knowledge data profile? So pictures, videos, links and all, like what are the different your, 
your profession so if you are like for me on my own account i have writer director producer because i do the three of those things so if someone is searching for a writer if they search writer among the profiles that are going to come out if person still searches a director among the profiles that come out just like that um you got your profession your name your social media handles linked directly to okay. the account so the person can just click and it take them directly to your Instagram page or your Twitter page or your Facebook page. You can have your um, your headshots, side view pictures, full length. So this mostly is for the actors. Do you understand that the casting directors need to see all of those information? Mm -hmm. But for crew members, it's important to also have like a headshot, like a good professional pictures as your profile picture, because like it's good to be um, professional. Mm -hmm. um, works that you have done, if you're an actor, the name of the project, when the project was made, the character that you played, if you're a crew member, the name of the project, the role that you played. So if you are like um, Sandman, so the name of the project, Sandman, when it was made, those kind of thing. Then you have space, your height, because those are information too that are important to casting directors if they're trying to cast for a role. Obviously yeah. for crew members, it's not so important, but your, your height, your age, your age, your normal age is, is not um, necessary. If you want to put that, that's fine. But what is important for an actor to put is the acting age that you can play. So we have it in range. We have yeah. it like, oh, if you can play 10 to 15 years, 15 to 20 years, 25 to 30, you can select multiples of that so that when somebody is searching for people that can play 30 to 35, they can see you. But if you can also play 25 to 30, with the search filter for that, they can see you. You can select, you can add that, you can add your location. So it's not just only for Lagos filmmakers, any good filmmakers, Asaba, Kaduna, Jaws, any state in Nigeria, you can add that. But again, you can add if you're available to travel. Yeah. So that even if you are not based in these states, but you are available to travel, the, this is an information that the casting director will have. You can now give us like about you, when you tell us more about yourself, I always advise filmmakers to be very precise. Use that about you to tell us about your skills. Like if you can swim, if you speak four languages, if what are your passions, all of those things that can also sweeten the pot for like somebody trying to hire you. As a crew member, if you are a sound man, but you also like are able to also do sound edit after on set recording of sound, you can mm. add those information there. So that those kind of things. And then, you have spaces to add your monologues or your showreel. And we made it in such a way that you can add more, more than one monologue. So as for an actor, maybe you have a monologue where you are showing like your range as somebody that's psychologically not imbalanced. And you have a monologue that shows that very well. You can put that. If you have a monologue that shows, oh, you're a happy-go-lucky person, you can put that. Like if you have different types of monologue that you have done that shows your range, you are not limited to one, you can add multiples and mm. then you can add like your management or your contact details for so you can put either a phone number or an email address there so that mm. if somebody had looked at your profile and they want to cast you then they would be able to cast you and like take the um take the conversation further but again on the website somebody is able to message you in app to like say what well, as if you like have whatever conversation they want to have with you so if you now want to not take it off the app if it's working out, then you can do that. So those are all the information that cast and crew members can put on the profile. We also have a space for those that are not working in the industry yeah. or non data. So you can sign up as an audience member. For us, what the audience members are different because they are, they are, for us, they are an important part of Nollywood. There is no Nollywood without the audience that are watching our movies. We are not making our movies for ourselves. At least yeah. that is what I believe. If not, when you make the movie, then put it in your house and only you watch it. We are making a movie for a massive audience to watch it. Like there are over 200 million people living in this country. And this is not counting the diaspora and people outside Nigeria as well. So what the audience is are doing there for us is for them to also, you can set up as an audience and you can browse through the catalog of films that we have there. We also like are always asking for the audience to like rate and review movies. If there's a movie that we have the information there, I have watched it. You can rate our reviews because amongst everything, we're also trying to like have like a rating culture where you know how 
Rotten Tomatoes is, is very popular for rating Hollywood, um, Hollywood movies where people are looking for what is rated on Rotten Tomatoes. So mm -hmm. we also want to, like, what's rated on Hollywood data for our movies? What are the audience saying about it? What are the reviews saying about the movies? Oh, this film has like a four-star review on Hollywood data. This yeah. film has like a three-star review on Hollywood data. So that's what it is there for the audience. They're able to discover movies and then they're also able to tell us their opinion uh, about um, these movies. Yes. So okay. I think like that's like the major features. And then as a producer, I forgot, you can, not just a producer, because now we are working with colla um, collaborators and contributors, but mm -hmm. as a producer, you can upload information about your movie on the platform. So it's not just us searching for these movies and uploading. We made this very user-friendly that mm. if you have signed up on the on the platform and you have a film and you want people to, because people are checking our website, we are seeing the numbers behind the um, behind the scene. People are checking out and seeing old movies and discovering new movies. And because we have a direct link, sometimes if the movie is online, Netflix, Amazon, Iroko, TV, all of those other platforms, you can we put the link directly so that when you click on it, it takes you straight to the movie or whatever mm. platform is on. So you can upload your film information, even if it's on YouTube, put up the film information when it was made, put up pictures of the cast and crew, their names, the crew members, the cast, and a link to the film as a producer. So somebody can see. So if somebody even visits your page as a producer and they can, when they scroll down to your page, they can see all the movies you have added. Yeah. Do you understand? So they can still go further to see the works that you have done and those type of things. Right now, we are working with local critics, and they what they do is that everything that they discuss on Twitter Spaces on Sundays mm. on their Nollywood Film Club, they upload information about it on the platform, helping new people to discover it and then go watch and then rate, review, and all those good stuff. Yeah. I also noticed that you have a script section on the website where some scripts are available. Yes. Okay, what informed? Yes, because I'm a writer. Yeah. Is my lack of finding Hollywood scripts to read because I'm somebody that enjoys reading um, scripts because it really helps as a writer. I always advise people read scripts, read other people's scripts. It helps with your writing, it helps with your vocabulary and all of those things. So it's really hard to find Hollywood scripts. It's almost non existent, except you know the person that wrote the scripts personally or the producer of the project. So yeah. which, even though that feature has been difficult to develop, we're still trying to convince people and process because the writers are willing to leave us the script, but most times the scripts are no longer theirs because it was paid for and then it belongs to the production company. So we are trying to convince production companies to put out the scripts to the public for people to read and all of those things. So that's what that feature is, is for uploading old scripts to films that have been shot and released years, months ago for people that are interested in research and read the script to find it and read for research purposes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So far, do you have, have you had like your happiest Nollywood moment? Have you had the like moment that you were like really happy for something that helps the industry move forward? Have you had that happy moment yet? I mean, not really. I mean, when only that I lost and people were excited about it, it was exciting, but more than exciting, it was overwhelming and it was scary. So I don't necessarily think I've had that yet. Hopefully when my series comes out or hopefully when we start getting a lot of success stories from Lonely Data, I would have that moment, but not necessarily at the moment. I have had like little bits and moments of like, oh, this is nice, but nothing that exciting yet has happened yeah i'm sure like most 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 websites um have their algorithms what what can help people improve their visibility on knowledge data putting now using a good profile picture and filling up like all the spaces that you're supposed to fill out on the on the platform because we have on the homepage where we do this feature talent and we don't feature talents that don't have like a proper profile picture. Yeah. Because one, it doesn't look good on the homepage. So if somebody just goes on the homepage, at least you are sure that they're going to see your image before they even start searching for all that. So one yeah. of the things that help is like putting out proper information because those are the profiles that get featured on the homepage. Definitely. 
I guess you know this partnership, for example, the one with Iroko Critic, they are they are um like very key to the mass adoption of Noli Noli data. Um, like what other plans are you do you have for you know for your website for your company to kind of make it um become you know a household name? I mean, we have a lot of plans. They are not easy. I'm not going to lie to you and say that doing only data has been easy. Every Monday morning, I want to quit. Sometimes mm. two times a week, I want to quit. I mean, like, really, nobody, absolutely nobody sends me. And mm. I'm the one that put myself in this situation. So it's not easy. But I think what one of the things that we realized recently is that we are pretty, pretty young. And we are such a small team. So, like, we are trying to not put pressure on ourselves as to, oh, we want to do this, want to do that, want to do that. So what we are doing at the moment is see what is working, what we need to push on, and what we want to do. You know, there are so many things that we want to do. We really want them data to be a household name. We really want to convince people to be like, this is good for you. Because personally, I've just been like, not only data is just here to solve your problem, it's here to make your life easier. It's just about convincing people that this is good for you, so get on board. Because people don't like doing things until it's very popular or it's very mainstream to be a part of something. Yeah. So we are still figuring. So what we are, we are in the chatting stage where we are doing trial and error. Where we are like, okay, let's try this out. Is it working? Fine, let's continue with it. Or let's try this method that if it's not working, let's discontinue it. I'm very big on, thankfully, my business partner too, my co-founder too, somebody like that, who is very big on, just try it. If it doesn't work, then you know it doesn't work. So we are, we are in the stage of trying out things that we think would work. Because we have our goals. We have the big things that, we have where we want it to go. We yeah. know all of those things, but the journey to get there is not easy. So what we are basically doing is just trying out things, figuring out what is happening. When we did the collaboration with Iroko Critic, it was a trial, and then we saw it's working. Now we are trying to see how do we expand on this thing that is working? Yeah. How do we get more contributors on board since like it's, it's harder getting producers to upload their movies? How do we get Nollywood enthusiasts to just take on a page and then upload these movies and it's their thing? That's something that we are trying. How do we get people to rev, re, rate and review? What do we need to do to convince people? So, like recently, we are trying to think like last week after um, no, uh, local critic had one of their big days um, during their film club um, thing. They are offering people like um, tickets to go and watch a film, a film that they want to review next week, but you have to have reviewed the film on only data that you are seeing. Those kind of so we are trying it out to see like different things, and that's basically what we are going to do until we figure out things that are working and things we need to continue and things that we need to draw. Yeah. But that's just the trial and error until we get it right. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. So I would say like in Nollywood, there's this if I if I if I call it like microwave culture where um most times you know like enough time is not left to do certain things. So an example is, oh, I want to cast somebody, I'll leave it till I have two more days and then I'm on Instagram, I'm looking for this type of actor, this age and mm. all that. Um, Nolly Data is solving one or two or three problems or challenges that Nollywood has. And the thing is, we need an ecosystem of you know entrepreneurs that are solving different problems. You know, Nolly Data Absolutely. is is five months old. You guys are still standing, so you must be doing something right. What advice would you have for other entrepreneurs that are contemplating, you know, um, starting something to, you know, address some of those challenges that the industry is facing? What advice would you have for them? Hmm. As someone like you just said that you're just five months old, I yeah, don't know I mean, that I know much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I know much, but for what I have seen, Nollywood is a very weird industry. I think it's important to go in with that mindset. Yeah. It's a ridiculously weird industry. It's weird how we react to things. It's weird the things that trend. It's weird the things that we are liking. It's just weird. It's, it's a lot of weird things happening. So going not assuming anything, going not assuming. Oh, this thing, you know, for example, now, when we are building only data, you would think that once only data comes out, everybody's going to be on board, like it's going to take a life of its own. Yeah. Because, like, basically, it solves a lot of people's problems. 
Mm. But then you realize that wait, you have you are having to convince people, you are having to talk to people multiple times, you're having to tell people this is important to you. So that would, that's the problem you would assume you wouldn't have. But then you realize that no, people only just like getting on board on things that are trendy. Knowledge data yeah. is not trendy yet. Do you mm. understand? So if you're coming in here, don't make an assumption of what you think that will happen, even when you have done market survey. This industry is weird. One minute people are liking this movie. And you think, oh, let me go make this kind of movie, then it's going to work. Then you go and make it, and then people don't like your own for some weird reason. So again, is a thing of just coming, assuming, I'm very sorry to say this, but coming, assuming the worst. Mm. Coming, assuming that the work is going to be very, very difficult. Coming ready to like have days where nothing you're doing is working out. Those things are possible. Those things are things that are going to happen. And don't do it if you're not passionate about it, honestly, yeah. because the only thing that will keep you going is that I actually really like this industry. I want the industry to do better. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't passionate about Nollywood and the things that have to do with Nollywood, I would have given up on Nollywood. Mm-hmm. I'm not lying. There are days where I go to my friends and be like, convince me why I should not give up on Nollywood. And they would not be like, oh, because like they will not just be as friends tell you the things that would motivate you. Yeah. But I also know that at the back of my hand, it's not really what they're saying that is making me go on. Is that I genuinely, genuinely, truly like Nollywood and want Nollywood to do better. Like, there's nothing else I can do but film. I realized mm. that. And I will always be a Nollywood filmmaker. It, like, I can't go to another country. In as much as I'm obsessed with Korean dramas, I can't be a Korean filmmaker. It's not yeah. possible. I'm not Korean. Do you understand? I'm mm. Nigerian. I'm telling Nigerian stories. So I will always be Nollywood. So it has to be passionate first, even as an entrepreneur. Even if you're not working directly in the industry, like you are coming from like, uh, you know, like something like Iroko criticism that are critics. Yeah. They are not working in Nollywood. They are outsiders, but they, those people, because I know them personally, I'm aware of how passionate about they, they are about Nollywood yeah. and how much they are obsessed with Nollywood and the content that comes out, out of Nollywood and how much they want Nollywood to grow. That is how they are able to consistently do this thing that they do all the time. Even yeah. when they have all the backlash, when they are insulted, when I know when they started, they used to have like 10 people on the Twitter space, yeah. 15 people. It's not exciting, but they have consistently been doing and doing and they're getting 1,000, 2,000 people on the space. People are not even calling them out online. Do you understand yeah. for the things that they say? But they are creating a difference. So those, because again, they are entrepreneurs as well. So when you are coming in, just just if you are not passionate, if it's just business for you, then bring in the money. But have somebody that is passionate be the one doing the dirty work, doing the everyday um, job. Then just invest and go. Just that you can't take on anything to be a disruptor because that's what somebody that's a, that's a word somebody used to describe knowledge data. And some of the other projects that are, people are doing to move Nollywood forward that we are disruptors. So to be a disruptor, you have to actually like against all odds want this industry to move forward because it will frustrate you. I'm not even lying. You're yeah. going to be frustrated. You can be sitting there with people and that's going to tell you 50 reasons why what you're doing is not going to work mm-hmm. and why you should leave the one you're doing and do it and do the one they think is what should be done. So you just like have to be grounded and know that there are many days that you're going to want to quit and it's not going to be, oh, start today and then you start ripping the foot of your work next week. It will take time. Yeah. But again, I don't know because this, I, this I'm speaking from my own experience and then from experience of few people that I know, somebody else can come in and their own will skyrocket like within one month, which will also still be exciting for yeah. Nollywood. But yeah, that's it. Okay. Um... Was that one film or TV series that you're always happy to go back and rewatch? It could be you know, Hollywood you or know I was thinking about it too. Yeah. I was thinking about it. I was like, I don't have a favorite film, but I have my comfort shoes. Yeah. Big Bang Theory, I've seen like multiple times. I can't count how many times that I've watched Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Um, um Korean drama crash landing on you. I watch it when I feel like watching people that I love. 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so like I don't have all the big like all the I'm like you know, like I was just saying like I'm not a filmmaker that I you know how people have all these black and white films like all these very technically conversant film that they're like oh this is the best thing I've made no yeah. it's big band theory if I'm sad I'll go and watch big band theory mm. if I'm feeling the type of way I'll go and watch Korean dramas. That mm-hmm. they are just my comfort shows. I watch a Thai drama, Thai is Thailand, or a Japanese drama. Those mm-hmm. are the things that just makes me happy, excited. I go watch the Colombian Victorious and watch and listen to them sing. We yeah. that stuff. So I'm not deep like that. I don't know if that's just anybody wants to hear, but those are the things that I enjoy watching. Yeah. We went theory when I want, I feel like being excited. And then, funny enough, like I told you initially, I'm obsessed with BTS. They have this variety show that they do run BTS. One of my one of the best things that gets me out of any bad mood. I watch them. Yeah. So it's just a combination of sitcoms. I watch it. I think that if there's a sitcom that exists, I have seen it. Mm. And then Korean drama. So in that space, those kinds of things, those are the things that I watch. Okay. Then for Nollywood. Right. Anything yeah. that comes out of Nollywood, I watch it. It's not like I'll go back. The only the film that I go back to watch a lot is Nollywood is It's Okay. That Jade um, Osiberu's um, It's Okay. Yeah. That's one of my favorite Nollywood films. They rom com, so yeah. Nice. All right. So, um, you know, the streamers are coming into Nollywood. Um, the world is getting interested in Nigerian, you know, content. The filmmakers, more people are getting into filmmaking, more people are becoming technical. The quality of our films are improving. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Was that one thing that you think we need to give or make a priority at this point? For me, it's two. That's what I always say. And this is a personal opinion. Story and caring about our audience. I think that... Um, we are using the cameras that Hollywood are using, yeah. right? We are shooting with the same cameras. Um, we have a lot of good technical people. Yes, even though we still need a lot of education happening in our industry. Most yeah. of us that are filmmakers didn't learn, didn't go to film school. All of those things is like um, we are rugging it and figuring it out and learning, which is not a bad thing because no matter how many, how much film school you go to, you still need to. You still need uh, hands-on experience, especially in the industry that you're working in. But more than anything, so we are shooting good things, like you said, the picture quality, most of the things that come out now, the picture quality is nice. Again, the cameras are doing the work. You will yeah. grade, it will be fine. Those things are happening. But again, the story, because I personally feel like the story is the most important thing. The story is the bedrock of anything. Yeah. If there's no story for me to follow, then why am I looking at fine pictures? Mm. That's what I'm saying. Let, your, let the story make me feel something. If it's going to make me laugh, let's make me laugh. If it's going to make me sad, let's make me sad. If it's going to make me oh, let it make me oh. But let me feel something. Let there be a story that I'm following that has a start, a middle, and an end. It doesn't yeah. even need to be deep. You just need to decide what the story is and then make sure that you're telling that story. I think that's one of the places that we are finding it difficult to to so one of the things like i said because i'm a huge fan of the asian um, cinema and the industry most especially korean drama i have studied them a lot i've studied their method i want and they have a massive following and they started out almost when we started out they started out shooting with the kind of you know the cameras that we are using to shoot them some local them and also them yeah. of the asaba film era that's how their movie industry started as well we are so alike but look at where they are now do you understand yeah. Within last year and this year, Netflix and NASA are pumping in more money into their industry because there is a large market for Korean dramas. There are so many people now consuming their content. So yeah. now, almost every month, there's, a, there's two or three new um, Korean drama originals coming out on Netflix. It didn't used to happen like that. It happened because all that are watching is while we're watching Korean dramas, obviously, honestly, there are fine people that we are looking at, but there's a story. They always have a story. They have yeah. a story that we are concerned about. They have a story that makes us feel things. And those are the reasons that we are watching it. 
So, and now they have consistently continued to build their audience, build their audience to extend to and correct. Netflix is there, giving them money, putting it into their industry, making originals back to back, back to back. back. Like this month, there are three Netflix originals from Korea that's come out. Get, three might be what Nollywood is getting the entire year, if we even get three. But this is in one month. So I feel like we should care about the story that we are telling. And when I also say about care about the audience, yeah. I don't know. I know this is a personal opinion and it's very controversial. And I'm not saying that that's the truth for everybody. But it sometimes seems and feels like we are fighting our audience. Mm. Like we are on this side and then our the Nollywood audience is on the other side. Why, and personally, why I don't like understand that? it. Like, I don't know why it's like that. It personally feels like, oh, when the audience says, Oh, we don't like this movie. Then us filmmakers, I'm very really excusing myself because before I've had audience, I'm a filmmaker, a Hollywood filmmaker. Then us filmmakers that start fighting, I'll be like, oh, if you don't like it, it's fine. It's not, do you understand what I'm saying? It's not as if like they are the enemies. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think the audience are our enemies. If anything, they're the ones that we should be pampering. We should be asking them, what do people want? How do you want it? Oh, we yeah. are sorry, we not the this because. They're making a product and they're the ones buying. Without an audience, there's no industry. Mm. It's essentially we are going to making our films and be watching that. So I feel like we should reorientate the way that we react to our audience, the way that we react to feedback from our audience, the way that we take our audience. Like it's money that somebody is spending to go to the cinema to watch your film. It's yeah. data and time that somebody is spending to watch your films on this streaming platform. The least they can do is to have a good time. The least they can do is to feel fulfilled when they are done with that film. Like they should not come out feeling even angrier than they. If they are feeling angry, let it be that the film was created and the story made to make somebody feel angry. Like let's not be because they felt, oh, this is a waste of my time. Yeah. Let's not always see the audience as like our enemies. Personally, I always say it, I tweet it and say, the Nigerian audience are the most forgiving set of people that I've ever seen. You can do nonsense today. Tomorrow, if you do good one, they'll forget that you did nonsense before and they yeah. will not start praising. And I'm not saying that we are making nonsense. I'm just like using that one loosely to say they are so forgiving. I have seen the Korean audience be the... Mm, there's, a, there's a series that we were watching earlier this year yeah. and then suddenly I saw online that they have started a petition to take the series off air. Okay. Do you know why the, the audience wanted them to take it off in Korea? Right. Because the, a, the drama in a scene, in a couple of scenes, misrepresented something that happened during the war that happened in Korea. That is why they wanted it off air. It it's misrepresented their history yeah. in a couple of scenes. The filmmakers had to come out and apologize and then say, oh, it's not a true representation of history. Is is just a what is a fiction, blah blah blah, and they have to apologize Be, because the audience in these countries have the power. They are the ones that have to say. The filmmakers are like at their mercy. They have the power to say we no longer want to watch this thing. We want this thing off the air. We want this show cancelled, and then it's going to happen. Mm. They can say, oh, this filmmaker did this thing, and this actor did this terrible thing cancel this person. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of cancel culture. I don't believe in cancel culture. But I'm saying, like, this is how much power the audience um, have. And this is why when they do well, too, you see their films doing well and people talking about it. So mm. I, I feel like we should care more about our audience. We should care about how they feel. We should care about the products that we're giving these people. We should be worried about the products that we're giving them. We should feel like, oh my God, I'm going to go and give my father my results. I need to do well so that it's not going to be a problem. Do you understand? It yeah. should be in the back of our mind when we're making Obviously, you still need to make the content that you want to make, the content that you love. But if you're making it for an audience, also make sure that you care about their time, the money, and the resources that are all going to put in to consume this um, content that you made. That is this for the story and caring about our audience. Amazing stuff. Thank you. Um, so how can people keep up with your work personally and, you know, updates from Nolly Data? Um, I, please don't follow me on social media. I'm begging you in the name of God, mm -hmm. but just follow Nolly Data. <laughs> My social media, I, I like, I'm embarrassed to say it, 
If I tweet 10 times a day, eight is about BTS. <laughs> okay. So it's embarrassing when people see me in public. I'll be like, oh, I follow you on Twitter. Oh, you really like BTS. I'm like, I'm supposed to be here and be looking like somebody that knows what they're doing. But yeah, just a fan girl. So, but if you follow me on Twitter, you don't mind the occasional, consistently drooling over some Asian men, then you can follow me at Diddy Stories as Diddy underscore stories underscore on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. If not, just follow, follow Nolly Data. Um, I have a project coming out soon, a series that I did. The teaser is on my Instagram page, um, but we are still in post-production, almost finishing the post-production now. And then um, did a couple of writing and all of those things, but and Nolly Data is taking most of my time these days. So on social media, yes. You can follow me if you don't mind, but please be, be aware that I don't usually sound like I have sex mm. on socials. All right. Thanks, um, Chidima. Um, yeah, keep up the good Thank work with Thank you so much. Nolly data. Do not quit, please. <laughs> we need we need Nolly data. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. It doesn't frustrate me to where I give up. But thank you so much for this. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember to rate and review the podcast. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Selegal Film and the podcast at the Niger Film Pod to share your feedback. You can now support the podcast by visiting the website to donate. See you on the next episode. Have a good one.